Hey guys, Martin Matrugger, Tips and Tricks. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. I'm one of these places. Just hit the subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for that. Okay, uh, I don't know if you know, but we're going to talk a little bit about Honda generators, basically inverters. Uh, the difference between a generator and an inverter. A generator generates electricity. It requires the motor stay at 1 RPM to keep the cycles per minute. An inverter actually allows you to change the RPM of the motor and the inverter itself controls the cycles per minute and the voltage. Okay. Now, this generator here, I'm having a little bit of an issue. I don't know if you noticed, but I plug in my light, I get no light. Okay. So I went online, uh, I'm looking at some of the YouTube videos and um, there's this one that's not too bad. It shows you how to check the ohms of your st stator and some of the other components, rectifier. Uh, and um, I did all that, they're all good. And then, um, but he doesn't tell me how or how to find out what's wrong with my inverter, okay, my generator. So I went online, downloaded a manual, I uh, was able to find out some tests. So I'm going to show you those tests. So I don't know if you notice right off the bat, I have a green light, and the green light says I have output, and I don't have output. So that scares me right from the get go. I'm starting to think it's going to be a very expensive part. So, uh, so I went and I read through the directions. First thing it tells you to do is if you have a green light, is we're going to go to this very next step. So let me move some stuff out of the way and turn my generator. Okay, so deep inside the generator, I'm going to move this you're probably not going to see this very well but there is a connector back in here it's a five wire connector so in some cases if it's a newer one by the way it's actually a six six connectors but it only has five wires to it so this is the wire harness that is going to run I don't know if you can see that very well. Okay, right there. So this runs to my inverter itself, and I have five wires. I, like I said, there's the newer ones have like a six-port one. It's side by side, and one of the one of the ports is empty. So, and you'll see wires here. I got blue, white. Sorry, blue, white, red, and then you have gray and pink. On the newer connectors, it's gray and orange, but they do the exact same thing. These are from my stator. The red, white, and blue should have voltage when it's running. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to check the voltage. So I have my voltmeter here. I have it set on 400 volts. Okay. So make sure you don't have it too low because it's just going to show that it's out of range. You're not going to get a, you know, a, an accurate reading, or you might consider it bad when it's really good okay so I I know that according to the manual at about 4200 to 4600 rpm of this motor I should be getting around um, 225 AC volts so I got it set with the squiggly symbol that squiggly symbol means it's AC voltage if you got the solid line and dash line that's DC volts and we're not working with DC volts here now, that is a lot of volts, by the way, so please be careful. Try not to touch the metal, so avoid shocking yourself, okay? All right, so I'm going to test with my leads, my leads, red and white, red and blue, and then white and blue. And all three connections should give me a total of 225 volts while it's running then when I get done I'm going to test the pink and the gray pink and gray or orange and gray might be on yours should give you about 12 volts AC voltage remember so I'm going to start it up and it's going to make noise I'm just going to do the the meter test so you can see so you're going to watch this I'm trying to get it so it doesn't fall on me
Okay, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I had uh, I had the RPM too fast. So I had to lower it a little bit. Again, the neat thing about an inverter, the voltage does vary with the depending on the RPM of the motor, and then the inverter converts it to a solid 120 volts, 60 hertz. Okay, so when it went ran faster, my voltage went up higher, which basically say says to me or tells me that. <laughs> I'm working this the stator is working here it's giving me AC voltage and if you saw I had 12 volts for the 12 volt charging port this parts working so what else could it be all right well this plugs into the inverter so let me I'm gonna spin this around I'm gonna show you a couple things here so the inverter Is back here and here's a little electrical connector this goes to the ports on my front so before I break this I'm gonna disconnect that just so, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this here so and this is by the way this is where those wires plug into they plug into the inverter and the inverter controls the voltage going to the output and this output goes to the front so, I'm going to take this off here real quick. Now, of course, you do have a switch here, circuit breaker. You want to make sure that's pressed. If it's ground fault, make sure it's not tripped. Those are the obvious ones, which you probably already checked for. So, um, now here's the back of this. We're going to tilt this a little bit. So, here's my outlet here. So, I'm going to take my wires. I'm going to pull these through. These were plugged to my inverter. I'm going to check basically from the inverter to my outlet. So I'm going to switch this to ohms. So there's my ohm meter. Uh, and then I'm also, not only am I going to switch it to ohms, turn this, instead of looking at my fat belly, you can look at the inverter. Okay. You're going to want to zero out your, your, uh, digital volt ohm meter so you make contact here with the two leads and you press the zero so it's zero okay now now I'm gonna go ahead here's my white wire here I'm gonna put my connector here into the white wire which I just saw my white wire is broken I think I found out what's wrong with this so if my white wire is broken maybe that's why I'm not getting power but, so because that's broken, I go all the way to here and look, I'm open. Now if I go to the red and check, red to red, I got continuity. So I think I'm going to have to fix that connector. Maybe that's my only problem. That would be great if it was. Now say I check this. And I didn't have continuity. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check across your uh, circuit breaker, and make sure that it's good, which it is. And if that's good and this is good, then I hate to say it, then what's wrong with it is my inverter. But I'm not going to replace my inverter. I'm going to try to fix that broken wire that goes in here, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. So. Guess what? I actually got it to work. At least I got it to give me some power. So here's the thing though. Um, 
I have to get a idle control wire. It was missing in this when I had it. So the idle control is not working. Uh, but the generator is. And that was the most important part because when I first got this thing, I wasn't getting any electricity out of it. And um, I was a little nervous. I thought for sure it was going to be the inverter. I almost thought that this thing was junk because would I buy an inverter for this? No. The inverter is over $400. Um, the generator new is, you know, a little over a grand. I'm not going to spend $400, half the, almost half the price of the generator for something that's old when I could spend $450 at Harbor Freight and buy a, a generator that uh, is a little quiet, it has more fuel, and lasts a little longer. So um, I'm not saying anything bad about Honda. I'm just telling you that. Um, I'm not gonna spend that kind of money if I could get a generator like that, so. But the reason why I thought it was the inverter was uh, because of the way I was doing my testing. So um, when I tested the wire, I was back probing the wire on the back side of the connector itself. Well, it was broken inside the connector. So you could probe it from the uh, other side, but there are really tiny holes. So here, just let me show you real quick. So, of course you can never find what I want. There it is, okay. So, you know, I was basically taking my, my probe. Ow, ow. God, I just T-pinned myself and stick it in the backside of the connector. You know, where the wire was because it was open not going in here okay because the hole was too small so what you could do is you could buy some t-pins like this and you could put them in in here but the problem with the t-pins is you know now you gotta like try to touch this thing and if you have two t-pins close together and you short it out that's 110 volts you're gonna short you're gonna get a like there, see the two T-pins? So these short out, <laughs> you know, um, you're gonna get a flash and it's gonna, it's not gonna be good. If you can test it this way, it's safer. That's the safer way to do it. Um, but if you're doing ohm meter readings, you know, the T-pins are fine and maybe use a little tape to, uh, to keep them separate from each other. But if you're ohm meter reading, you're usually checking one wire again at a time it's not a problem so okay so t-pins to help don't go not shoving this t-pin in t-pin in the connector if it's too hard to put in you're probably going to bend something and then you lose that connection too and that can also be a problem so i have to get a new connector for this i did the way i did it was i soldered it and it's going to need more uh the solder itself will break because of vibration over time and i just i want this to be reliable so i'm going to go ahead and um, just buy a new wire that goes from the inverter to the outlet and uh, I believe they're available I might have to buy the outlet if not I'll look for a connector a better connector to fix it with but in the meantime that's pretty much how you do your diagnostics on that if the stator didn't show that 125 volt on each one you probably need a stator if you didn't have anything on any of those three wires the red white and blue wire, then um, there, you, you could have an issue with like the magnets inside and so forth. I doubt it though, these things are pretty pretty well built. I can maybe see a stator going bad, um, like if this thing gets tossed around a lot. Inverter is less likely to go bad, they're packed in epoxy itself. So is it impossible? No, it's not impossible. Anything could be bad. In this case, it was a wire and I was able to find it. So hopefully it's the same for you. And my name's Martin Matreger. It's Tips and Tricks. I'm not a professional, but I play one on YouTube. Please subscribe. Thanks and have a nice day.